Welcome to the Academy of Art University Automobile Museum. I'm Wayne Barnes, I'm the curator. I've been here about 12 years. The university started in 1929. This was a dream to have this automobile collection of Richard Stevens. He's loved cars since he was six years old. He'd look through the windows here in San Francisco and see these great cars. And this is his way of bringing back the past so future generations can get used to the, what the styles that were. Let's take a look at our Tucker. This car is a recent addition to the collection because we had so many people asking about Tuckers. They would come in and see the other cars and say, do you have a Tucker? And we didn't. We had been looking for one for quite a while. This Tucker is Tucker number three off the assembly line, which was really a makeshift assembly line at that time. These cars were futuristic in a way. There were some safety devices that were added to this car that were light years ahead of the other manufacturers. Unfortunately, Tucker wasn't able to produce enough of them to stay in business, and they built them in 1948, and that was it. Let me show you the interior. In the interior of this Tucker, you can see that they designed a safety zone over on the right. That was designed for a passenger to avoid any kind of dashboard injury. They were able to get down there on the floor for safety. They did rollover tests in these cars and they performed well. Some of the switches on the dashboard included for safety a center controlled headlight that would turn on and off when it's about 10 degrees off center. Made easier for looking around corners. Tucker incorporated a lot of other manufacturers' components in this car, rear engine, automatic transmission, um, and they were light years ahead in 48. Why don't we go take a look at William Randolph Hearst Duesenberg. Supercharged 1935, Murphy bodied, disappearing top. Would have been a great car to have in the mid 30s. William Randolph Hearst picked it out as a used car. Probably had a lot of fun driving this thing. These engines are double overhead cam, inline eight cylinder with the supercharger. They built high 20s of these cars total. They'll go over 100 miles an hour, and this would have been a lot of fun to drive. I can take you over and take a look at this Buick now. It's one of a kind. Restored back in 1989 by Fran Roxas. All of the caning you see here on the doors, hand applied. This car was ordered new by Sandra Plankington. She took this car to Florida from New York every summer. Let's take a look inside. The inside of the Buick back here is super comfortable. Lots of leg room, has some neat instrumentation here that we can keep an eye on what the driver's doing while we're riding. The interior can be kept cool by rolling down the windows in the front and on the side. Get cross ventilation. When you had your friends along, you could add by pulling down the jump seats, one on each side, so you get four people back here pretty comfortable. Let's take a look at our Mercedes 300 SL. You know why they call it a gull wing? Take a look. The inside of this 300 SL is really cool. Lots of gauges, fuel injected engine, meant there were a lot more things to keep an eye on as you were driving it. Originally kind of designed as a race car. What Mercedes did is they figured a way to tilt this steering wheel down so you could get in easier when it was street use. Kind of hard to climb over the sill here, but that gave you a lot more room to put your feet in before you got to take it out for a drive. And these cars really are fun to drive. A lot of power, very solid chassis. This car was owned by the uh, Jenny Craig collection prior to us attaining it. Let's go take a look at this uh, plaid side Roadster Willys. This car uses a night sleeve valve engine. They're super quiet, little smoky. Ultimately, that was the demise of that engine. But this car was designed by Amos Northrup. It was a big smash at the auto show. They sold out the first year. Let's take this one for a ride. First, we'll have to turn on the fuel supply. This car does not use a fuel pump in a sense, it uses a 
vacuum tank that uses engine vacuum to draw fuel into this tank from the gas tank at the back of the car and it gravity feeds the carburetor. So now that that's on, we're ready. Thanks for coming along for a tour of the Academy of Art University's Automobile Museum. I hope you enjoy the drive as much as I do.